This month's Where Did the Road Go is brought to you by three amazing people. Super Inframan, Allison Cook, and 36 Dingo. If you want to become a patron or a sponsor, go to wheredidtheroadgo.com. And now our show. Transmission start. Welcome to Where Did the Road Go? Join us as we wander off the path and explore lost history, consciousness, the paranormal, unexplained mysteries, alternative thought, and much more. We are present on the web at wheredidtheroadgo.com. Now here is your host, Soraya. Welcome to this edition of Where Did the Road Go? And I am here this week with Barbara Fisher of Six Degrees of John Keel. Hey, how's it going? And Natalie. Greetings. Who has been here a few times. Mm, three, two. Three, two. Mm. <laughs> it's been so few, I've lost track. I think three, but I could be wrong because yeah, I, I don't remember things. Yeah, it is three, I think. Uh, you were on with Chris when he was here. Yeah, and I did the... Uh, and then you did the one with Heather. And I did the one about the cow skull. Yeah, so with, three times. With Josh, yeah. Oh, with Josh, that's right. Because ah, of the Faye connection. Yeah. Josh was very excited about that. So anyway, um, Barbara, we wanted to get your, your take on some of this stuff. And uh, Natalie's been living upstairs from me for the last year and a uh, half-ish. Somewhere in there? Yeah, squatting, yeah. And uh, so weird stuff has happened while she's been here, too, so I can at least testify to the weird stuff that happens to her. Cool. Which is different than the weird stuff that happens to me. Slightly different flavor. Yeah, and sometimes we don't know who did it. <laughs> ah. It's, it's, a, it's bound to blend eventually. Yeah. And we have some stuff on video, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I don't know where you want to start, Natalie. I mean, if it's all about my experiences, I don't know. <laughs> I figured it would be everybody's all at once. Well, there was the weird experience that you, you gave the green light talking about, which, which occurred. You think I would be more prepared for this, but you're more prepared than I am. It was in August of uh, the August before last. Right. So about three months after you moved in. Right. Uh, it was on August 10th, and I had a terrifying dream. It was just. It was. It started in this house. It was at night. It was dark outside. I should have mentioned that actually. Um, and it was supposed to be. When it took place, though, so like mid-August, it was supposed to be warm. It was warm in here. I was dressed appropriate, appropriately for the weather, and I just kind of like wandered through the house. I don't know what I was doing exactly. Went out onto the sun porch, which looks three directions, so, you know, it has a good vantage of the yard, and saw everything was covered in at least three or four inches of snow, fresh snow. Like, it had just blizzarded, and uh, even though there was just there was clear sky, it was a really surreal view. And I started just freaking out, like, oh, what does this mean? Why is this happening? It was freezing. I could feel how, like, the biting cold um, as I stood out there. And um, so I go to look at my phone, as you do, to check the weather, like, what's happening? And there is uh, one of those warnings, like those um, pop-up warnings, telling me that there was a serial killer or something on the loose, like some deranged person who had uh, committed a lot of murders or damage of some sort. And they were warning the, the locals. So I... You know, I'm just sitting there trying to figure it out. Like, what does this, what does this mean? What do I even do with this? And I look across the fields and it's, you know, quite a ways to the other side of the field. And I see headlights headed in, in this direction over the fields. And these are rough fields and they would be full of snow. So that wouldn't be an easy feat for any vehicle to do. It looked like a large truck, but instead of just having two, uh, you know, like round headlights, it had a, a third one on top. So it was like this weird triangle headlight truck coming toward the house and so i'm i'm panicking because i just i don't know if i just assumed or somehow instant instinctively knew because dream logic that this was the killer or whatever had been decimating things and i run back inside and sarai is wandering around and he acts like he's sleepwalking like he's so present and so real but like he wasn't quite with it like he was having his own dream or something right. so i'm panicking and trying to tell him hey hey there's a okay so there's a warning and uh, it's like he's half listening, just like, yeah, yeah, I guess. I'm like, yeah, but there's somebody, like, I could hear the truck at this point trundling into the yard. And I'm like, oh, I just panicking. So I realize that the doors are all open and unlocked and unsecured. I'm like, well, the first thing we should do is at least do that. It doesn't really matter, but at least it'll slow him down. So I start doing that. And of course, it's too late. He's coming in one of the doors. So I tried to just get uh, as far away as I could from wherever he was coming in. I think he was just like going around the house where I wasn't because we were still just standing in the kitchen. And at that point, Sarai is going into the basement because I think he understood that there was, I was saying that there was danger and some warning on my phone. And I must have been like yelling about maybe going into the basement. Who knows? And I'm like, wait, why are you going down there now? It's two ladies in the house. <laughs> it's like, 
We're, we're, oh no, like, I didn't even know what to do. I was just like freaking out and yelling about anything. Like, truly panicking. Like, it felt like it was actually happening. All of this was just so viscerally real, like, standing there and feeling everything. So, some time passes. I'm just frozen in place. Like, I, I had nowhere where to go. I didn't know what to do. And the guy just kind of walks around the corner and he's wearing a, it looked like a, it was either a black hoodie or like a black windbreak or something pretty thick that, you know, for the cold and like just khaki pants. That's all I could see because I was terrified. And he didn't really look at me until right as he was getting to the door to leave. And he just kind of glances at me and acknowledges me and says something I didn't remember because I was in an absolute panic. Something about checking something out, I think, was the, the impression I got. And I'm just standing there like, okay, I just need to accept it. I'm going to die. He's going to kill me. This is it. This is, I'm just going to take it. Just going to be brave about it. And he just leaves. He just left and closed the door. And I'm just, you know, standing there left to not know what's happening now. And I think the dream just sort of just changed like into a normal dream from that point. I wake up the next day and, you know, I, I write it all down. And I think a few hours later, I see Sarai and I'm like, did you happen to have any weird dreams last night? I don't, I don't remember what I dreamed. You're, it was the dream you said that you were driving down the road. Yeah, I was, and head, I was heading down 89 <clears throat> South toward Ithaca. Man, there were ghosts everywhere. Oh, that's right. The ghost dream. Yeah. I don't remember it. Well, I don't remember having it. Do you have the notes on it? <laughs> I, I think I might have tucked yours away. I can take a look. But from I what I remember you telling me is you were driving and uh, there were ghosts absolutely everywhere on yeah. the side of the road. They were driving. It was like they were transparent or something like that. Yeah, and like trailing almost. Yeah. like they Oh, were, wow. They were, you, you said that they seemed really cool. Like you were just yeah. taken with how cool they were. <laughs> I wasn't upset about this. It was an interesting <laughs> no. thing that was happening. Let me see if I have it. But there, there was something about the the area by there's a there's a rest stop and it's just a pull off. There's not no buildings or anything like that, uh, which is about the area I saw the giant UFO back in 2001. And for some reason, I have dreams about that spot um, before I, I saw the UFO and after. Actually, found some stuff that connected to all that. But um, in this dream, that also that spot also featured and. Was was the guy on the scooter? Was he? It's a really short thing that you that you sent okay. me as is what you wrote okay. that morning when you woke up. So this is untouched. Um, oh great! <laughs> oh, it's, it's terrible. You should just edit this out. Um, driving <laughs> driving down eighty nine towards Ithaca on the right of the rest stop, I see a misty ghost like figure on a scooter or something. I realize that I'm seeing a ghost and I want to take a picture, but I'm driving. Then I realize that I have the dash cam and right. it should be on there. And that was that was the most important detail, I thought, <laughs> next to the scooter. That's right. And then the rest of the dream doesn't seem as relevant. Uh, you see other ghosts as you go on, and you're kind of excited about it. Right. Because who wouldn't be? Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. And you just meet up with somebody in a park. And, oh, that's right. Yeah. And you said it was all misty there, too, which I thought was kind of relevant to all of this, just the, the constant mist. So, so that happens. And then I go to Ithaca that day. And I'm driving down 89, and I pass the, the rest area, nothing. And I get down to uh, where you're entering Ithaca on 89, where it drops down to a 30, and you go past this theater and stuff. And there on the left side of the road is a guy on a scooter looking pretty much like he did in the dream, except not ghostly. Oh, wow. I have never seen somebody on a scooter, ever. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, it was just weird. I almost stopped to talk to him. So now, since I've moved here, and even uh, before I was living in Pennsylvania, I never saw scooters. Like uh, motorized scooters. Yeah, like and coming little... from California, yeah. motorized scooters were a thing. So I didn't know that they weren't really a thing here. But I have paid strict attention ever since that day to see if I'd spot a scooter. I haven't seen a single one in, what, a year and a half then? Or yeah. it's almost two years? Yeah, almost two years. <laughs> and, the, and the thing about it is he was dressed like it was winter. He was dressed exactly oh. like the guy in the dream. He had, yeah. the, you can see it. He's got the black hoodie and he has the, the khaki pants on. And as, I, wow. and as I drove by him, I went, oh, it's the guy in the sky. That's going to be on the dash cam. And it was. <laughs> well, it's good that it was. Because if it yeah. wasn't, then there'd be all kinds <laughs> of questions. <laughs> I just Lots think it's, questions. and I think it's remarkable. You thought of that in the dream. Yes. Like it was just, you know, echoing back into your mind. Well, but, this, hap this happens more and more in dreams where phone i need to take video of this did that just spike again because i just heard yeah it did a actual static snapping oh it did yeah. yes it did cool i thought it was gonna like electrocute me from <laughs> like my face and uh, which part did it just static over i was being quiet i don't think there was any talking no i don't think you said anything okay which is why i heard it <laughs> it was quiet for that second yeah i could see it 
weird. Wonderful. That's very strange. I'm gonna have to get a new mic. Um, so yeah, so that's on dash cam, and it, that that's something I I now think about in dreams, grabbing my phone, taking pictures, taking video. Maybe maybe that's on my dash cam. Um, I've had owls fly out directly in front of me on a number of occasions, but of course on the dash cam they're just blurs. Yeah, yeah, because they don't stop and go, hey, take my picture, <laughs> exactly. and fly on, they just keep going. But owls in weird places, like in the middle of the city, suddenly this owl just darts in front of the car, and I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, I've had uh, owls fly right in front of my car on the way up the hill to my house, or um, my favorite one was I went outside, this was in... Uh, it was in summer. I think it was last summer. And I had just gone outside because I thought I heard um, uh, the coyotes howling. But it was really early. It was it was twilight. So usually they're out at night night. Right. And so I went out and I was standing on the steps that lead down into my garden. So I'm on the second floor, essentially. And this barn owl flew right past my face, right level with my face, about five feet from me. Nice. Like a like a white bullet, just whoosh. And I was like, oh. And I never did hear coyotes once I got it out there. So it was like I was lured out to see the barn owl. And I'm huh. like, okay. Yeah. Cool. That's the, co- the coyotes and owls are in tandem out here in my recent experiences, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they seem to uh, yeah. inadvertently work together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, there's that. As far as, like, I, re- I just find this stuff fascinating because there is, I don't know if you could call it evidence, but we've got, it's multimedia. <laughs> it yeah. Is, even, I don't know what kind of, you know, you could chalk that up to coincidence, but wow. Yeah. What kind of coincidence is that? Yeah. It, a lot of people ask me, you know, why don't you take pictures of the, the stuff that you see? And it's not like I have never taken photographs and it's not like Morgana has never taken them. Um, but we've each only taken like a couple and we see way more stuff than we've photographed. And it's because the way that the photographs turn out, they only really prove something to myself and the people around me. They really don't tell anybody that's, you know, skeptical that this proves anything. It doesn't. But what it does do is it proves to me that, yes, I'm seeing an actual physical light or You know, I'm seeing actual glowing beings that are humanoid shaped. Right. Um, And they are actually emitting light of some sort. Now, is the light acting the way it does, the way physics says it's supposed to in this realm? No, it's not acting like that. But it is still there. So in that sense, I'm not a real big take a picture of it person uh, in large part because I don't necessarily want to piss off whatever it is that's, oh, yeah. you know, having yeah. its way with communing with me or communicating with me or whatever it's doing. I don't want to make it mad. So I just kind of, you know, stay back. I, I know a lot of people take a lot of photographs of a lot of orbs and um, they can do that. That's cool. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I like living here right now. I do not wish to be kidnapped to some other reality right now. I got a 16 year old. I got to deal with that. <laughs> I kind of, um, I think my take on it is like, I feel like if it doesn't want to be photographed or if it doesn't want to be captured in some way through art, like I'll do art of it. Uh, I'll get yeah. that feeling and not do it. Sort of, sort of like the, the Gwen experience. Like I shouldn't say that name to everybody. That's all right. I feel are going to get that. So it's just something you can or can't share and you'll get a good gut feeling. Yes. Whether that's something you should be doing and then like, I'm, but, it, you know, stuff like this, even if it's not going to um, even if it's not going to help the skeptics come around to the to the whole phenomena, I think it's it's important for people who have experienced it. Like, wow. OK, mm-hmm. so this is something yeah. that has more of a physical presence or can be manifested in a, a way that we understand more. Uh, right. In a mundane sense, like actual technology can capture it, even if it's weird or it's vague. Like, yeah. I just I like just my think- orb pictures don't show the colors right. Same with Tim Renner's his his orb pictures when he's taking pictures, the colors aren't right. They're not in there. It's, yeah. it's like a white light. Yeah, and some of that's just the failings of technology because light just you know it's it's overblown because it's trying to just capture the light so it doesn't do the color. Yeah, like, yeah. That. like it's, it's just gross. I think it's some of that. I also think it's some of it is psychic. Yeah. Some of it is our brains perceiving something that. You know, cameras don't have consciousness, so they can't pick it right, up. You right. know, they're not. Maybe if we had AI cameras, they'd pick it up. But I'm not wishing for that right now. <laughs> so 
I, I think too that these things are emitting a form of light that we can perceive yeah. probably on another level that cameras just mm-hmm. don't know what to do with. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's absolutely the truth. It's, it's, it's just weird, you know, it, it's all very strange, but I, I, I don't, I don't know if I would have talked, you know, pulled over and talked to him or if I would have been worried I'd scare the hell out of him <laughs> by being like, hey, I had a dream about you. <laughs> exactly. Except you were a ghost and you were all filmy, but like, you were wow, wearing guy. the same clothes. <laughs> wow, guy, where'd my... you get that scooter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it was in the winter, you know. <laughs> and, and, and why are you oh. where, why are you wearing winter clothes in the middle of like a 98 <laughs> degree day? Like, what if you pulled over yeah. and he's like, I don't know why I'm here. It was just snowing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Then, then the poor thing would probably just be like a, have a mental breakdown because you know it was snowing. And who, why are you asking me these questions? It's I don't a, know. And it's such a weird clip because the guy just keeps his head down the whole time. Yeah, so you can't see a face or anything. It's not like it was a one minute clip or anything. But still, he doesn't move. He's not moving. He's just like this still person, just oh, standing yeah. there with his head down. It's a really kind of a strange and hood up. Yeah. So it's oh, just a, yeah, a dark, that's... dark space where the face should be. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that it's is kind of. It's there. A little bit camera. creepifying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I like that. <laughs> I thought I it was interesting. Yeah. And and as as I said to Natalie before, because we recorded this before, before the you know microphone decided to explode and be strange. Um, there's when she was talking about her dream and and the man dressed in the black hoodie and turning and looking at her and then going out the door. I had just read like a couple days ago about the murderer of the kids in Idaho, the college kids. There was a housemate who saw him who came out of her room as he was walking past. And she was just so shocked. She just stood there and she stared at him and he just walked past her, stopped, looked back and then just went and went out the door. And she, you know, she ha- she was having a, a serious fight or flight or freeze moment. She ba- her brain just basically shut down. So she just kind of stood there and then went back into her room and shut and locked the door. And she doesn't actually remember much of what happened until much yeah. later than that. Hmm. Um, but that just kind of weirded me out as, as Natalie was talking. I'm like, where is that sound familiar from? What? A- yeah. And then Very I was like, Ew. vibe. <laughs> So, yeah, I have to share it with everybody. So I'm not the only one going. To- <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> well, he had been upstairs, so I don't know what he was killing up there other than spiders. But Well, well you know. You know, also, you, you, you mentioned that what that reminds me of the whole emergency alert and everything is when we had the tornado yeah. warning. Yeah, that definitely because it was. OK, so that was a whole other thing. <laughs> middle of October. I think it was October 15th. So and y'all ain't new, y'all ain't used to that. No, and it's that, not like this. Not yeah, a, it's not the South. It's not a New York thing. No. Especially not in October. Yeah. At like, 6 yeah. oh, a.m. Yeah. I would expect that in Kentucky or something, but not here in October. <laughs> That's yeah. Pretty yeah. strange. And I, I had just gotten up to go to the bathroom. Innocently, there was a storm going. I'm like, this is nice to sleep, too. Great. You know, and I kind of looked at my phone to, to, you know, just look at the weather, just glance at it. And there was nothing there. I come back from the bathroom. There's a tornado warning just popped up there. I'm like, are you like exactly yeah, like no. in the dream? It was the same kind of alarm thing. And I, <laughs> so, you know, me being half asleep and uh, from Minnesota and being very PTSD about tornadoes, the whole thing just came together. I was absolutely petrified and very sure I was going to die. Very similar to that dream. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And then Feelings she, were very similar. She called me and woke me up and she's like, there's a tornado warning. And I'm like. There's a what? What? Tornado. <laughs> Soraya says, we don't have those here. I don't. <laughs> well, we do, but they're usually very minor and they're not in October. I yeah, even and, went... and they're generally probably watches, not warning. Yes. yes. You know, that's And there that's was no different. watch beforehand. And I, I went to check because I know that I took meteorology classes. So I go to look at the radar and there's a little hook echo. I'm like, are you? No, uh-uh, this is not. I'm dreaming this. This has to be a dream. <laughs> um, in this yes. case, however, she went to the basement and I, I got up groggily. <laughs> And was like, why are you in the basement? I'm going to go look outside. And it was like, nice out. And I'm like, I mean, it seems okay. It's nice out. It's yeah. That, see, that that's point, some but... Ohio nonsense, Soraya. That's what Ohio ones do. They they continue mowing their lawn while they see it in the distance. <laughs> and, and see it coming towards them. And they, they just wait. It Yeah. 
There's something, I, I'm not yeah. that way. I go to the basement. There's something less scary about it because it was, you know, pitch black out. It was night. It was like five in the morning or something. I think it was six, but it was still dark. It yeah. was still, yeah, it was to- totally black. And that's what was scary to me because I had grown oh, up yeah. with tornado warnings in the middle of the night when it's like decimating your neighborhood and yep. you can't see anything. So all you can do is run downstairs and just hope. Yep. The, uh, yep. I mean, we've had only one on the property since I've lived here. Two prior to that hit the big barn I have and did not knock it over. Uh, that, that That's thing's, a good barn. That thing's a trooper. I mean, it, it, it took two tornadoes. It stood. Um, the, the one that I did, that we did have literally was right next to where our performance studio is now. My dad's truck was parked next to it. The tornado was small. But it got close enough to the truck where the truck was starting to come off the ground. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. And then That's it just kind of fun. wandered off and blew itself out. I mean, they don't usually do tons of damage. Um, they're they're very mild tornadoes when Small, we get them. Yeah. Well, last yeah. summer. Well, you're was... in hills, so it's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. Well, last we're summer... in the hilly part of Ohio too. So when we get them, they're not generally hideous. Right. They're not great. Still they're still. not horrible. It's flat enough here that I worry because last summer there was a. I went outside because the clouds looked amazing. I was doing a photo shoot with them. And as I'm doing the photo shoot, the storm kind of starts blowing. And it's a new storm, like a young one. And, of course, a wall cloud starts forming out of the base. Uh, yeah. And I'm standing mm-hmm. there just like, yeah, it looks like it might produce a tiny tornado at best. But I'm not worried. <laughs> so it was, you know, when I could see it in front of me and gauge mm-hmm. how large it was and how much damage it would do, it was just not that scary. But at night, <laughs> the tornado warning. Night is up the worst. Front. There's no way for me to go outside and, you know, gauge anything and, and that's, no that's night is terrible the only tornado warning we've ever had it when it was dark out at least it didn't snow true that would have freaked me out the most no that that was my thing from this summer where i kept dreaming that i got up and it was there was snow outside in august and i kept telling people and no one seemed to care they were just like yeah and i'm like it's august there's snow outside and it didn't actually snow but someone i know who lives nearby I think a little higher up, got sleet to the point where it looked like snow on the ground in August. Uh, wasn't it hail? Jeez. Like a hailstorm? Yeah, it was like hail. Yeah. 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 And yeah, she posted a, that here. She, she posted a post. picture of it, and I'm like, there's my snow. I knew there was snow. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had like three different dreams that it was snowing in August. That's wild. Yeah, and it was weird that it was both, both of our dreams were August. Oh, yeah. yeah. August is a weird, one of the weird uh, time periods for me. Yeah. Close yeah. the summer, I guess. Although the, uh, there are now frequent ones. There's there's August, there's October, um, May, and sometimes January. <laughs> just kind of slowly covering the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. It's just going to keep going, and then you'll know that it's just always weird. <laughs> well, it's it's like shift time periods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the, it's the sort of liminal places between, you know, time periods of weather or seasons or when there's a lot of work when there's not a lot of work because i've noticed it with people that you know teach it's like right before the summer break there's a there's a spate of strange and then right before the summer ends and they go back to school there's a spate of strange Hmm. for teachers and i just think maybe we're more attuned to anything odd if we're a little bit stressed out about something Oh, sure. Yeah. Plus, you're, you know. you're putting more PK energy out then, too. Yeah, that too. So if there is something odd that's going to happen, it can pick up on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was one of the other things you've had, um, Well, I wanted to go over the, the other, since we're on the topic of evidence, or at least uh, being captured on your cameras, <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying uh, in vain here to find the... The candle? Yeah, the candle incident, but, but it's also because... It was like a few months where I had like three major events with like the footsteps in here. Yeah. Okay. Start with those. Well, I guess if so from the start when I moved in here and uh, you, you still had the two cats, Nim and Jack. Right. They, uh, you know, I'd be in the kitchen. This was when I just got here. So I don't know if it was owing to that, you know, sort of liminal phase. But I would always think that you were coming down the hallway because there would be these boot steps. Well, you were supposed to be asleep. And I would just stand there waiting and not, no one would appear. I'm like, well, that's. Uh, weird maybe it's just the way the house settles but it sounded exactly like footsteps i couldn't really uh i would go and investigate and try to make it sound that same way it wasn't constant it wasn't every day it was just you know every once in a while so that's how it started that was probably well that would have been like june of 2021 so i'm trying to figure out 
when the next major one happened because there was one where Sarai was gone and I was upstairs and I thought he came home and walked because the way it's set up like my room is not directly above where the living room is there's like a dining room and then it's above that to get to the living room you have to walk through so I could feel it's like somebody come in the kitchen walk through the dining room and into the living room and right below the steps that go upstairs and then stop and I'm like, what is happening? Like, did something happen? Is somebody going to come upstairs? I, I thought something was wrong. It, it's not something I would normally do. Yeah, and it was really hard footsteps. Like somebody was in a hurry, like bam, 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 like boots, like heavy boots. And I could feel it because the, it's an old house. So it kind of sinks down. You don't just hear right. it, you feel it, right? <laughs> like the vibrations and stuff. I'm like, right. So I'm sitting there, I, you know, at first I didn't really think much of it. Just like I thought. Soraya came in, he was in a rush to get something out of the office or something, and then nothing happens. And so it sounded like somebody was just standing at the foot of the steps looking up them. It was the creepiest feeling. Like, oh, oh, now no. see, that's, that's not cool. Yeah, and it was, nope. it was not totally dark out or even like a creepy time of day. Nothing creepy was happening. And so I was just like, I don't know what prompted us. It. It's finally like, you're home, right? Like I texted, <laughs> like, no. And just like that cold chill of like, I need help. <laughs> yeah. That, Do I call the authorities? Is there anything on the cameras? Because <laughs> somebody just yeah. came in. Yeah. And like, uh, and there was just no mistaking it, but you couldn't hear it on the cameras at that point. No, no. So I was like, okay, I'm just losing it, I guess. Like, it was just a one time. I almost didn't uh, document it because it was I, just like no big. I, I have wise cameras in almost every room, but they don't pick up audio great. They're, they're not, mm. the, the video is fine. But especially with the newer ones, but even on the newer ones, the audio is kind of sketchy. Right. And I don't really use them for audio. I'm using them more for video. So I'm trying to find the date. Well, I'm sure it's on the, it's on the actual videos themselves, but it must have been um, in April then. Last April? The, the more recent one? Yeah, with the, yes, with the actual, because, it was in April, right? Yes, it was, it was in April because it was before Haitian played. Okay. And they played at the end of April. So I was here alone again. This always happens when I'm alone, but I didn't hear it this time. I actually, it's, it's kind of, you have to kind of explain the way the place is set up too, because there's like a, an upstairs and a downstairs. And then a back part. Of it. part. And then like a whole add-on, like a 90s add-on, like it's not part of the original house. And so mm -hmm. that has no upstairs. It's just like a single, yeah. it's almost like a, like a ranch style home on the other side that's attached to okay. it. Um, so I was upstairs, I was getting ready to shower and, um. It, it was weird because Heather's been having health issues and had to go in for surgery. I didn't know when that surgery was going to be. I had, a, she forgot to tell me. And so that was weird that it worked into this. It's, it's relevant because I went upstairs and uh, was wondering how she was doing and stuff. And then I go take a shower and, and this doesn't happen. In fact, it hasn't happened to me since or anything like that. So it's not like a normal shower thought for me to have. I had a very vivid vision of that Gwyn guy. Like full mm. regalia, like standing out there in his the hat and everything, like standing outside in the, what would you call the area beyond? Is that the, like the backyard? But no, that's like the front yeah. yard kind of, right? I guess. I, it's hard to say. It's a I huge mean... yard. So there's like this, you know, outside the kitchen window area. And it was weird because it was hyper specific, like him standing out there looking up at the window, except for, it was like I was there looking at him and displaced from the shower for a sp split second. And he was looking at me. And um, I can't remember if he said anything or not. It was just a very short, maybe two or three second vision. But it was so clear that I almost, it made me dizzy. I almost fell in the shower. I'm like, well, what was that? <laughs> that was alarming and strange. And I guess it's just me being weird. So I just kind of wrote it off and kept showering. And around the exact same time is when you came home yeah, and this, you told me. This I remember. Yeah, that's when you came home and to uh, told me about the candle thing happening. Yeah. Well, I didn't know I didn't know what it was at first. So I'm walking toward the house and from the area of the library, which is like the first part of the uh, newer part of the building, I hear this loud kabang. And I stop and I look and I'm like, what the hell was that? All right. And I, I wonder if maybe it was like the neighbor on the other side of the house and it just <laughs> echoed over. I Because I, I, I couldn't tell what it was. It was just loud as all hell. And I, uh, I come into the house and I don't see anything amiss and I don't think too much about it. And I had a candle that was at the end of a bookshelf. And a little bit later, I come back in and I am like, where's the, can why are the books over? What was there? It was like oh, one of those there was big a heavy glass photo candles. Yeah, it, it came, it was a promo item with a band. I don't remember which one off the top of my head. And I'm like, where, where's the, what was holding those up? And I look down below it and there's the candle and the candle fell and hit the 
heating register, oh. which is why it made so much noise. It didn't break the candle, yeah. but the, the heating register alone, you know, hitting that is going to make a lot of noise. So I'm yeah. like, that's what it was. All right. And I pick it up and I put it there. I'm like, but why did it fall? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm like, let me pull back the camera. All right. Candles there. Candles there. Candles not there. Okay. Back. And you hear these <laughs> footsteps, these mm. loud boom, boom, boom. And then the candle falls. And I'm wow. like, okay, I wasn't in the house. Uh, and, and at first I was just like, it has to be a raccoon or something. But it's there again, there's nothing on the there's no like upstairs, so it's just roof above there. And if yeah. you're approaching, you would have seen something. Yep. And, or somebody'd and, have to be walking on the roof. And and raccoons and stuff running across the roof happen and they do not shake anything. No, it's they don't sound like that. It's like we, two, we've two, had bam, raccoons bam, bam, bam. and yeah, they they scuttle with, you know, sk, 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 yeah, I can hear sounds. them when they get in the attic. <laughs> and and yeah, we yeah. tried it with me stomping and it wasn't as loud as these footsteps. Wow. So it was a little concerning. So I'm like I had the idea a little bit later. I'm like, wait, what about the kitchen camera? Because it sounds like it's coming from there. And the footsteps start somewhere in the kitchen and, and it all times up. So it's it's like in the hallway headed from the kitchen down that way. Yeah. So you, there's two different videos of these footsteps and they're very, they're really clear in the kitchen too. And again, there's yeah, just- I forgot that. Yeah. Like, the, <laughs> so there's two of these videos with these footsteps that just don't make any sense. But were enough to shake a wall that is very, very stable. Yeah. And knock a candle, which which was right on the edge of the shelf. But I don't think Still, I don't think I could have knocked it off if I was jumping up and down in that room yeah. for like half an hour. Yeah, it's almost like something walked in and knocked it off the shelf, and I was like, "Huh, that's cool." And on camera, the giant cat with boots on. <laughs> and I don't know if it had anything. Always to, knocking stuff off. I don't know if it had anything to do with the vision. It's just very strange. I was in the shower. Had that vision, and then that happened. I have no idea, but it turned out that um, you know Heather was going in for surgery the next day, and I just didn't know about it. So it was enough to prompt me to to reach out and find that out. So. Which is probably the point of the whole exercise. Yeah, maybe I don't know about the candle part. But well, that, and, and then it was. I think that part was just to make the point more Visceral? pointed, as it were. <laughs> it just to be like, no, really. Just had don't another, ignore uh, me. Just had another mic thing. Did, he did. did. did yeah, you, no, did you another hear? zap on the mic. Yeah, I can see it. I Listen. can feel it when it happens. Okay. Well, well uh, so long as, as long as it doesn't zap you across. Am the I room, doing it? Okay. <laughs> Is this normal? Is this I, it's it never does? done that before. Great. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> There is a bad switch on there, but the most that's happened is that it doesn't turn off or it it's dull instead of loud like it should be. You know, this is this is static to the point where I can feel it kind of like on my face on oh, that awesome. side when it happens. Yeah, if I see. We'll get it on camera at least if lightning strikes out of it. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but there was one more footstep in- incident when Heishen were playing. Wait, you, with yeah, Heishen, Kenzie was here. Yeah. Oh, that was not. That was that was probably the scariest because she heard it too. And I'm like, you know, maybe, you know, I'm so used to hearing it by now that I just sort of wrote it off. But then she's looking like, I'm like, wait, you heard that? Yeah, because uh, they, they were, they're sitting in what used to be the dining room, which is where my sound guy has his setup. And he just runs a cable out to the performance studio. And they're sitting in there and they heard it walk from what, the library into the kitchen? Uh-huh. And you thought it was me? Yeah. And I was outside with the band. Yeah, it sounds, it dead sounds like you're walking down the hall. Like, that's all it sounds like. So we just all turn like. Oh, surprise. Wait, nope. <laughs> Nobody's there at all. And that, what what month was that? April. That was the end of April. Okay, so that was before he arrived. Now, we had... Oh, the cat, yes. Yeah, we have had no footstep incidences since Scratch the Cat has arrived in June. That was June, right? Or was it July? It was June. Uh, Pretty sure it was June. I think it was June. Yeah, there's been nothing. He's, he's just, just cat. To, He's just erased it all. The, the, the cat I didn't want. Who just decided? I know. Who, you know, who just d- decided this is his house? <laughs> I, I, I. When when you said you weren't going to get another cat, I, I did not say. Mm, yeah, you are. But yeah, you were. Ever, you were going to get another I cat. Was. I knew that one would show up eventually. And like, and as soon as I saw him, I was like, "Yeah, that's the one. There he is." <laughs> And the thing is, I'm still not at all over the other two cats because I had a very strong bond with those cats. This one I have no bond with. He's just kind of a pain. I mean, I like him well enough, but like, there's no real bond there. I just he likes me to pet him and he likes me to give him treats. That that's our existence. No, you know, he comes in here, protects it, we feed him. That's that's the deal. (laughs) Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good deal for for everybody, really. 
But yeah, some cats I've noticed will will help keep the, you know, whatever's away, whatever it is that's walking through your house, whether it's a ghost or a spirit or, it's weird. you know, The feeling I get it from it is almost Gin. like, yeah, like the footsteps were the protector and it was tired of doing its job. So it said the cat here. Does that make sense? Yeah. It was the weird feeling I had. Like, all right, I'm done. Here's a cat that'll uh, tide you over for now, I guess. I don't know. But that was a weird feeling I got about it. Just like, all right, this thing's patrolling. I remember the other cats used to look every time I'd hear it in the in the hallway, too. Oh, like, they, they'd turn and look. Yeah, there, there was one point Nim would not come out of the back part of the house for anything, for like two or three days. Yeah, that, that kind of thing really freaks me out. If anything spooks me terribly, it's when another animal it starts to react to something that's there yeah yeah she she was terrified the other cat didn't seem bothered by anything but i picked her up and i brought her out you know and i walked around she's just like clinging to me like tightly and i put her finally put her down in the dining room she just bolts into the back room and i'm like what are you what what's doing this you know? yeah that stuff really yeah. freaks me out because you yeah. know something's there something's happening but you just can't yep. you can't perceive it and it yep. could just be a natural noise, you know? Who yeah, it knows? just it could be. It's just too high pitched or low pitched for you to hear it. Um, the, you know, their their hearing is extended. Their their ability to smell is yeah. way extended from ours, so it's hard to tell. But yeah, I've had cats. You know, when the cats react to the little lights outside, you know, when they jump up in the window to watch them, you know, right, duck right. their heads and follow them with their eyes. It's it's kind of like okay, yeah, they are there. Okay, well, okay. I kind of know yeah. the feeling because I'm on the autism spectrum, so I'm hypersensitive to everything, and I'll hear things that other people can't hear, or you yeah. know, normal things like uh, yeah, within the environment, nothing supernatural necessarily. I can point to and say it's that, but mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I've yeah. Also, I've also known for a long time if I'm not home for any length of time, weird stuff starts happening here as has been reported by everyone who has been here when I wasn't. Yeah, I was very comforted when you told me that because I really just thought it was me being paranoid. But, you know, it's not like I, have a, I live alone. Like, that's normally what I do. So it shouldn't matter if somebody leaves the house. Right. Um, I mean, back when I was a kid, I would, I would go stay overnight at a friend's house and my mom would get all kinds of weird, staticky phone calls for, for me that she couldn't quite make out. Oh, that's great. And I'd be like, well, who was it? And she's like, uh, and of course, this, you know, this wasn't where you had call wait, you know, or uh, oh, you know, yeah. numbers or anything. Old. Yeah. yeah. So this, this, there was no way to call it back or check what number called or anything. And no one was, and I never knew who they were because it wasn't like anyone's like, oh, I called you the other day and you weren't home. It they was were just, just the demons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Call her ID doesn't always help as my experiences have proof. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. My, my, my ex-girlfriend would hear music all the time when I wasn't here. I haven't heard that. Yeah. That's not one I've experienced. But or or people talking in the other room, and it would really freak her out. Yeah, but it would especially happen if I like went down to see Tim or something, where I was quite oh. a distance away. Yeah. So that big the boot. I, I just looked at the big boot steps that I freaked out about and asked if you were here. That was when you went to Rochester, so you were actually quite a ways away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even remember that. I wonder why I went to Rochester. Probably a concert. Yeah, it was just a concert, I think. That's why I thought it was weird that you were home early. <laughs> I was like, oh no, something bad happened. Like, I thought maybe you had a car failure or something. Which, what? You know, gonna check in anyway. Yeah, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> so, you know, that seemed plausible. And then when you said you were still there, I was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> no, it's just your friendly neighborhood wandering, whatever it is. Yeah. Coming to check in the house. Coming to stand at the foot of the steps and make me very stare. <laughs> and and, 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 I, and I, will, fun. I will take some of these videos and stuff and put them up as shorts uh, soon. I was planning on doing it already. I just haven't yeah, gotten around to it. We definitely need to now put you yes. on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, just because, you know, I figure they're, they're good, quick little standalone weirdness. Along, yeah. with, along with the weird EVP I caught when I wasn't trying to capture EVPs. Yeah, so, there, there was that EVP when Morgana and Chad Redding and I were trying to record an episode. This would have been, um, I think it was, yeah, I think it was like in February of this past year. So it was almost a year ago. And we were, he was, he was, he was on his phone and he was in a spot that he thought he would get really good um, reception but he just kept getting dropped from the, the recording. And wait, he was like, fine, I'll just drive someplace else. So he drove to a, a parking lot that was, you know, in the shadow of a cell tower. So that should have worked. 
But it was on a uh, like a, a state park or something. And these people came out of the woods and he's he's sitting there talking to us. And this girl, this little girl, this kid came up to his his forerunner and was like, I know you like out of the freaking blue. And he looked down and was like, I don't know you. And she was like, I've seen you. <laughs> he was like, well, Okay, but I don't know you. And Morgana and I can hear this. And then he gets dropped after that. <laughs> so, you know, he comes back hmm. and, and we stop the recording. And he's like, uh, I'm going to try one more place. And he's driving and talking with us. So we're all on this call together. I'm just not recording it. And he's driving. And I can't remember what he said, but we all three heard a fourth voice. Hmm. And it was a woman's voice. And it was like right after we heard it and we and and he said, what, what? And I said, yeah, what? What was that? He was like, that wasn't you. I said, no, neither Morgana and I were or I were talking because I could we had video so I could see them. I could see Morgana and she could see me and neither of us said anything. And I said, is there somebody in the car with you? And he said no. And then got dropped again. (laughs) Wow. And so we ended up not recording that day. We we recorded a two days after that. He hasn't had that female voice, you know, interrupt since, but it was weird. I would love to hear what that was. Yeah. I see and I was like, why the f wasn't I recording that? <laughs> you know? Wow. It's like if I'd been recording it, it would never have happened. But of course. Because <laughs> that's the way it works with me. Does anybody remember what the voice said? We couldn't really understand it. I was just like, okay, like an indistinct I, vocal. Yeah, it was it was vocal. It was female, and it was enough like Morgana or I that it you know tricked him. We both have very deep voices for women, and so you know he was like Barb. I'm like, nope, <laughs> and it's not Morgana either because I'm looking right at her. <laughs> and he, he was like, oh, I think, you know, check the back seat, Chad. Maybe you got a creeper back. <laughs> And then just the girl coming up to him before that, that's really, yeah, <laughs> that was me. weird. Yeah. That, that was very, very creepy. And, and so we didn't record until two days later and all of that did stop. But, you know, I, I was like, do you still have that piece of brick from uh, the, the insane asylum up the hill from us that we gave you in your truck? Is that, he's like, yeah, I do. I, uh, you know, maybe you should take it out of your truck. Just saying, <laughs> just saying, maybe you should. <laughs> Maybe you should put it, you know. See, see in your I, I like, I like to encourage this stuff. Oh, I know. I and and I will to some extent for myself, but having it in your car, I think, is a bad plan. Mm. That's just asking for, you know, yeah, the car to stop working or there to be some kind of violent uh, accident. I'd, I'd rather not be in a in mm. a two ton vehicle while that's happening. It's just a thing. And as I'm pointing at the mic, I don't really like when it starts to screw with actual technology in a way that uh, puts you back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know, I-, I used to have I used to have the ability back in the very long ago of being able to either destroy computers yep. or or heal them. Yep. Yeah. And it was back when there were mainframes with video display terminals. And it was when I was in the newsroom in college at the college paper occasionally somebody would be in the middle of a deadline deadline was like five minutes and they were in the middle of editing a story and boom the vdt would would start scrambling and 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 then it would go off (laughs) and so you know if they saw me they'd be like come get it come get it and there was just a certain way i could like put one hand on one side and then tap it on the other side firmly and rapidly and uh it would come back i i usually you know added the earnest angel like i hate you luck in the name of god <laughs> and uh that would that would help it but yeah or if i got mad enough apparently i could just you know destroy all kinds of stuff yeah that so. was my history I've yeah. noticed a huge pattern now with with uh hormones because yes. most, most of yes. my electronic destruction was at the peak of, you know, estrogen. And now yeah. that that's no longer the case, I don't get weird stuff like that anymore and I don't think I miss it, but it, there's a yeah. definite pattern to that. Like it was really intense oh, yeah. around that that peak and then it just sort of dwindled. Yeah. Yeah, it isn't as bad now for me either. The uh I used to work in a in a copy shop. So we we had like five copy machines, one of which was a huge 
document copier that that was from the Netherlands. The company was Ose. Hardly anybody's heard of it, but it was a really good copier, but it hated me and I hated it. So it was a mutual just hatred. And when we had the rush times, which was at the beginning of the uh, semesters at the college, we'd have that thing running 24 hours a day. We'd have 12 hour shifts and we'd just be feeding it paper and, and stuff to copy. And then, you know, binding stuff and it was it was a job anyway but when you got when i got sleep deprived and um cranky i that copier would it would just it would do terrible things it would just eat paper (laughs) it would spew paper it would and it was just like you know my my boss would be like okay it's time for you to take a day off you gotta go home i mean if you don't like what you're (laughs) doing then it's just helping you it's helping you rebel yeah yeah (laughs) it was it was helping and the first semester for Rush that I wasn't there, I had gone up to uh, culinary school in Rhode Island and uh, my manager called me and said, how you doing? I said, I'm great. I was like, how you doing? It should be Rush. She said, yep. Haven't had to fix the copier yet. <laughs> we do not miss you. I mean, we do. We miss you, but we don't miss your whatever it is that destroyed everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to be loved. <laughs> Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. We're going to take a break here, and I'm going to give you a little bit of information and a recommendation. So if you have a weird story you'd like to share with us for a future listener story show, email stories at wheredidtheroadgo.com. Also at wheredidtheroadgo.com, you can find all of our uh, contact info. You can find all of our social media. You can find shows going all the way back to the very beginning, just about 10 years ago. You can also sign up to become a patron, which is only $3 a month. And you get extra content almost every week, sometimes more than once a week. You also get the show a week early. You can mail me stuff, you know, that old snail mail stuff, at P.O. Box 444, Ovid, New York, 14521. Now, as far as a recommendation for this week, I'm going to go with another podcast, and one that you should already know, uh, because its host has been on the show many times, but he's also not a regular, as much as I'd like him to be. Uh, Greg Bishop has a, has a podcast called Radio Mysterioso, and if you have not listened to it, you really should. Greg is one of the top guys in this field, and uh, the way he thinks about this stuff and the way he, he interacts with it is, is really uh, unique and uh, valuable. So, yeah, Radio Mysterioso, that's M-I-S-T-E-R-I-O-S-O. If you haven't listened to it, check it out. It's uh, mostly UFOs and stuff, but uh, occasionally other paranormal type of stuff. But the focus is definitely UFO related. Next week is our 10th anniversary show. I'm very much looking forward to it, and I think I have picked the perfect guests. The week after that is our UFO history show with Mike Cleland and Aaron Gullius for uh, 2022. That should be a blast as well. All right, now back to our show. And we are back on Where the Road Go with Barbara Fisher of Six Degrees of John Keel and Natalie. Of nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Natalie from upstairs. Yes. The lurker. (laughs) She'd live in the attic if I let her. (laughs) Not anymore. The squirrels have taken over too much. Um, Yeah, squirrels can be cranky little buggers. It's a black squirrel, too, which I think is awesome. Oh, that is cool. I don't like the, the, the fact that they're destroying things, but it's it's a black squirrel. It's pretty cool. Well, now that there's that, that hatch door up there and I scream at them through it, they've been pretty good. They've been minding their P's and Q's a little bit better. But that's good. Yeah. L- l- luckily, I have a friend who is a carpenter. He's a very good carpenter because whoever built this house, and this house goes back easily to the mid-1800s, uh, the entrance to the attic was big enough for a child to get through, and that's about it. <laughs> mm, yeah. So, the impl- I don't like the implications of that now that you say it like that. <laughs> yeah. That's where Billy lived. <laughs> but we, uh, and it's big enough to build a room up there if I wanted to, but um, it's, it, I couldn't get up. I couldn't get my shoulders through the opening. Like my shoulders were too wide. Uh, I can yeah. get my head and one arm up, and I'm just like, why? Why would anyone do this? And he he enlarged the openings, and now there's a huge hatch to get into the attic. I could get up there, but the claustrophobia was immediate and terrifying. So. Not a, not a lot of weird stuff from the attic, though. Do you, do you I mean, want... I wouldn't be able to tell because of all the squirrel activity. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, well, what do I know? Yeah, oh, yeah. There could be goblins up there for all I know. 
What what um uh, do you do you want to tell the story about your phone? Oh God, well that's not such a big thing, but yeah, there's been a string of events. It was a big thing when it happened. Well, it's actually part of the larger like string of events re- recently because uh when does it actually start? So it was on. I started feeling like things were gonna get go off the rails around probably like Thanksgiving. And then on December 4th, and this is going to sound, this is the part that always sounds cuckoo bananas, but like, there are, there exist here, believe it or not, birds of prey. <laughs> but oh, this yeah. was an event that just seemed off. Like, something about it seemed strange. Like, um, first the coyotes went off really, really intensely to the point where I could record them. And uh, they're not usually as active in the winter, like when it's cold out, than they are in the summer here. At least I've noticed. So I thought it was a little strange. And immediately after, I am I was doing something and trying to focus on work or something. And I kept hearing this sound and I couldn't hear it over the, the space heater that was next to me. So I finally just shut it off and it was an owl, an owl uh, a great horned owl right outside my window, my bedroom oh, nice. window right next to my, my bed. And the first thing I thought, and it's not like I haven't heard owls here. They, there's quite a few on the property. Yeah. Yeah. They usually aren't, well, they're usually, that was the first time it's been right outside the window. Right. Um, so, you know, that was already kind of caught my attention. But the first thing I thought was, wow, this is pretty much exactly the day I heard an owl exactly out my bedroom window in 90, I want to say 96 or 95. It was December of 95, I think. And, uh, and the first thing I thought when I heard it then, and again, like this was in Minnesota, so, you know, owls happen. But the first thing I thought was like, isn't that something that's supposed to happen before somebody dies? <clears throat> and then two weeks later, my grandma died. And I'd never really well, met her. I didn't have like a close bond or anything. But that that kind of made it stranger. Like, it's not like I knew her, you know, and, and like, could it, yeah, like could intuit that something was wrong. Um, and it was it was like exactly two weeks. And then it was a big event that, you know, once she died, we inherited the house and we moved down to Georgia. And like it was a whole adventure in my I was 14 years old at the time so it was a, a big thing for me um but it was just that one owl and this time i i was listening i'm like that's not just one owl so i go outside and i got video of this it was two owls probably a mated pair calling back and forth like they do but there were also two other owls so it was like a parliament of great oh. horned owls which is i've never experienced this many owls four of them that's, that's amazing but there were the two close by, and they were both by my window, and then there were two further away, and they were all just kind of calling. So you can't really hear them as well in the video, but they were certainly noteworthy. And there might have even been a fifth one further down the road, like on the power I, I think, lines. I think there was. Yeah, there was a, it was a lot of owls. <laughs> And they That's kept a lot. And they kept this up for almost three hours on the property. Yeah. And so I went around the house get, like getting shots of the moon and like them, you know, just... And they, they would... <laughs> It was really creepy because I was going around the house to get different angles of the sound and stuff like that. And they would suddenly be where I was, almost like they were following me. So you would hear them get louder on the video. Oh, wow. (laughs) And I'm like, all right, this really reminds me of that because it was in December. But there is, you know, at least four of them, but two of them are proximal. Does that mean two people are going to die soon? What about the other two that are further away? Does that mean it's going to be distant future? Like, how do do I interpret that if I was going to interpret if there was anything to this? And then I just wrote it off as a cool natural event. But two weeks later, two people in my family died just a few days from each other. One on Christmas Uh Eve and one on New Year's. So that was just a strange... In between that, the phone incident happened and a bunch of other weird, like, little things that just sort of started adding up. But the phone thing was going to the store and... When was... What day was that? That would have been right in between... It would have been a Monday because it was... they, re- they recorded the metallic onslaught. Yeah. It was like right in between the deaths and the owls. Like, uh, so I don't know what day that was, but um, so we could just go to the grocery store. Uh, yeah, it was fairly uneventful. But one thing I do on the way back is like take my phone on tinker with it like anybody does. I don't have any memory of doing that, which was strange in itself. Uh, and I get out of the car and go reach for my phone where it would normally be. And it's not there. I reach in the other pocket. It's not there. It's not in my bag. It's not on the seat. It's not between the seats. It's not under the seat. And I start panicking, like, oh, my God, I left it at a store. It must have fallen out of my pocket. Like, maybe somebody grabbed it in just, like, panic because I had left it unlocked. So if anybody picks it up, they yeah. have full access to everything on my phone, which was stupid. And normally, I, it's funny because I had a dream where I somebody stole it in the dream while I was out in public. And I, it, I'm i like, I'm going to use this as a cautionary story to always keep it locked. But, of course, the one time I keep it unlocked going out, this happens. <laughs> Um, and so I call my friend in a panic. I'm like, you know, cause he can do the location finder on it. And he's like, it looks like it's on the property. 
So I go out to the car and start digging around. And I think we both dug around like at least two or three times. Under the seat, between the seat. I even looked in the back seat a little bit just to make sure. Oh, yeah. So did I. (laughs) Because it easily could have fallen and fallen into the back seat. All over the ground. You know, everywhere. Just like (laughs) it was dark, so that didn't help. But like I had a flashlight. It was... It would have been obvious. And so I finally, I go up, you know. Uh, and she had my, it on silent. Yeah, I have, of course, <laughs> like the worst yeah. case scenario. I go upstairs and start, you know, uh, doing the, you can bring it from Google to uh, to try to find it. Yeah, It'll jo- override jo- the silence. Jo- Josh from the Metallic Onslaught's like, oh, this happens to me all the time. Log into Google. You can have it yeah. ring an alarm. <laughs> I finally figured that out. So, yeah, and you can also erase it from, you know, I didn't know all that. So, no, I know, but. But so I start ringing it. I run out to the car. I can hear it in the back seat or like, like not the back seat, but like it sounded like it would be on the floor or something. And I'm looking around like, what the hell? I already looked here. Where? where? And I finally look at under the cooler in the back and it's under the cooler. There's no possible way it just fell back there or got flung back there or anything. I was quite a ways from that in the front seat. Like it would, it looked like it had been slid under the cooler. It didn't make any sense at all. It sounds. And she never went into the back seat because the door on that side of the car doesn't open easily. You have to like open it from the inside. Right. I don't put groceries. It just didn't. Physically, I could not have put, I would have to put it there. And Soraya would have seen me do it. Right. It was and that's just... a dumb place to put it anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, exactly. You wouldn't do it. Yeah, it. it was just chilling under the cooler. Why would you put your phone? <laughs> How... And it's not going to fall there because it's a cooler. It's a large styrofoam It's a large cooler. plastic thing. Yeah. It's all it's the way under. Gonna... Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. And I was just like, I was so angry. I just went upstairs and just. And then uh, I think a few days later, it had been a couple days, but or no, maybe a few days even before that, that I, I had like some chocolate bars. And like three of them because I'm a chocolateaholic. Like I have different percentages of dark chocolate. And I noticed one of them was missing. I'm like, oh, I must have finished that and not remembered, I guess. So a couple days after the phone thing, I go to get, uh, you know, now two bars of chocolate. And there's the third one. And I'm just sitting yeah. there staring at it like, um, somebody's how? having fun with you. Yeah. Like they're just mild things like these. I didn't yeah. like record yeah. these. So they. But it was just like this whole string of events to the out. It sounds paranoid, but like it's very strange to sp- Specifically, think of like the deaths and then the two deaths that happened, what, two weeks later or something like that? Starting to, no, two, yeah, about that, whatever Christmas Eve. So, yeah. minor stuff, but. Yeah, we call them pixies. I don't know what it is in our house that does crap to us, but it does. And it does to Morgana as well at her house. Um, and there, there have been times that. Um, I had a ring fall off of me at my house. I was getting laundry out of a basket, uh, out of the hamper to put in a basket to wash. And the ring fell off of my finger and I heard it hit the hardwood floor. Oh. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I go looking all over the floor. I look under the dresser. I look under the rug. I look under the dresser again. I look all through the clothes, shake them out. I'm like, it's not there. Well, that's weird. And a month later, it's at my friend's house in the middle of a room she goes into all the time in the middle of the floor on a hardwood floor there. It, now, what it was doing in between those times, we do not know. But Why is it always stuff that hits the floor? That, yeah. That in it's my like, experience, is, it's always stuff that hits floors? the floor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just enters the, like, the nowhere it, as soon as it hits zone. it. It hits, nowhere zone. it hits yeah. the floor at the right velocity, opening a wormhole <laughs> yep. to a future time and place. Yep. That's what it does. Uh, Creepy. You just Annoying. reminded me. Those weird little now, events you, happen around something that I completely forgot about until you said pixies. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, I got into contact with somebody who, who I had an experience with back in, I want to say 20, either 2013 or 2014. Um, he woke up and saw something in the room and he goes, there's a guy. And it scared the living hell out of me. Like, I was just like, I, he turned and looked. And then, so I had him describe it because I'm like, well, it's just hypnopompic, but it's interesting that he saw something like that. That's not something that he does. And then he started to describe this little, little brown skin, brown haired dude. And I'm like, Oh, so there's like, it, it looked like it, you know, it was trying to lead him out of the room or something like that. Um, and so fast forward to, I think 2020, I started telling people about, cause I think in the intervening years I'd had dreams about like brownies or something. I'm like, I wonder if that's what mm-hmm. that would, you know, count as, I don't know, but it was a little weird with his description, the way it was. And yeah. so I was like, well, maybe I've got a brownie or something. Oh, God, I don't want to talk about it now. 
because I told them that and everything went weird. So this is when I was uh, living in the same apartment building as Heather. Right. Um, I didn't tell her about this. It was just a thing I did online. And then my monitor started just going haywire. Like I have video of what it was doing. It was just like going through its, um, you know, sort of rifling through its, its settings and it wouldn't stop. And so... <laughs> Uh, there was and there was other like minor kind of poltergeist stuff going on. I, I just sort of dealt with it on my own. I didn't really talk about it or anything. I was like, well, that's of course. Like maybe I gave myself the suggestion and this stuff's happening now. But she comes home one night and tells me that her husband's freaking out because he just had his first full on apparition thing, and then it was a small brown person with brown hair, and it was running around their apartment. And she's like, you know. It's okay, you know, it's just a, it probably it's just sounds like a brownie, but, you know, I can try to, like, <laughs> sprinkle some salt and that kind of thing. And I hadn't told them anything. Nothing. Right. And so I'm just sitting there agape, like, oh. I did something bad. <laughs> like, maybe you're not supposed... <laughs> so I'm talking about it now, so I better be prepared. But um, she came upstairs at some point, and we did a whole ritual. I'm like, well, you're supposed to give them uh, dairy, I guess? So I just happened to get gifted some chocolate milk, and I don't drink milk. <laughs> and I'm like... Uh, let's put it in like a little cup and leave it in the spare room and, and see what happens. And we go sit down and my monitor fixed itself. It liked the chocolate. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's scary that's or cute or, or what, or just like a bunch of coincidences, but it's so profound to me that he saw something because he's not even a believer. So he was, right. he, I guess he was in a full panic about it. Just like, oh my God, there's something in the house and I don't know what to do. Yeah. So just fun stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, the phone thing was uh, bearing full witness to that was interesting. I, was I, I don't so have upset. a lot of app ports, so. Yeah, you didn't see the chocolate, and they're just minor things, but, like, they started adding up at that point. I'm you, like, also this... had, you also had the horns come off the wall up Oh, top. my. That's <laughs> right. I told that was the other thing. Oh, no, thank you. So the horns to the skull that was stolen, going back right. to the episode with Josh, Josh Cutchin. Um, I, I display them prominently under a sand painting I got in the same place. So that's like my little, my little sacred corner of things from the nineties that I still have left. And the, the, the horns are very special to me. So I put them there. They're just kind of hanging on twine on nails, but I made sure that they're, you know, if you knock them, they'll just kind of swing on the nails or whatever. And so one night I go to bed and I hear this clatter that sounded like, um, like a, like a bottle falling in the shower. And I'm just so tired. I'm like, I I don't care. I'll just get it in the morning. <laughs> what? And I forget about it. And it's hard to describe because, you know, I have to know the layout. It's so frustrating trying to describe house layouts. But if I exit my room, it goes into like a really short hallway. And then the bathroom is on the right. And then there's the stair stairs going down to the, to the left. And on the landing, going straight up the stairs, that's where the horns are hung. And there's a little short step up, like a landing. Mm -hmm. And now I, I look and there's like this, th you know, because I have nightlights. So there's like this long shadow of something on the floor. And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Because I didn't remember that sound at first. So like... I didn't even think of something being there. I'm like, what is on the floor? It looks like a rat or something. What? Why? And I look closer and it's the horn. But it couldn't have just fallen because if it had just fallen, it would be on the landing. It might have bounced a little off a cord or something, but it would just be on the landing or even have rolled down the stairs. And it's actually up, elevated on the landing and further forward, like it had been thrown. It had to have been thrown, essentially. <laughs> like there was some sort of velocity to it when it came off the wall. And it had just landed there, and I'm just, I didn't even know what to do. I just picked it up and put it aside and went back to bed. But, um, you know, I tested it in the, the morning. I talked to Sarai because you bumped them going oh, yeah. by them. They don't come off the wall easily, and they start, and nothing was broken on it. The twine was intact, everything right. was fine. It just had just, it was just there. Like it didn't, the nail was not gone. It, there was no way I could see that it would have happened at all. So it was just a cluster of events, the phone, the horn, the stupid chocolate thing, all of this happening all at once. But yeah, it was it was a little distressing because I just couldn't figure figure any of it out. Normally I can come up with an answer. The um mm -hmm. Closest. Leave chocolate milk out, but where the cat can't get oh, it. Oh, and it was obviously. interesting <laughs> because it was the horn that my mom saw sticking out of the because when we found the skull. All she saw was a little, about an inch of the horn sticking up out of a dirt mound. There was no way to know a skull was in there. She's like, what is that? And it was the horn that had been sticking up because it was bleached on the end. So it was interesting mm. that it happened to be that one. That is interesting. Yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't have a lot of airport stories. I think the only one that even really comes to mind was I had a Baphomet, Baphomet necklace. And one day it fell off when I got out of the car and I just assumed the chain broke. 
and it slid down my shirt and dropped onto my foot, and I picked it up, going, oh, great, chain broke. And I looked at it, and I'm like, chain's not broken. How did you come off? That's impossible. Oh, wow. Like, I just sat, I just sat there going, I because the thing wouldn't, the chain wouldn't even fit over my head. So even if I had bent over far enough, it wouldn't have come off. Yeah. It It would have gotten stuck in your hair anyway. Right. It it just, it felt like the chain broke and it fell down my chest. Weird. And then I picked it up and I'm like, how are you? This is not a thing. Okay. I'm not wearing you anymore. And it wasn't yeah. on clasp. I I don't know if it had a clasp on it, but it, it did. But it, the clasp would have had to have broken. Yeah, there's no way yeah, it could have reclasped. Cool. Yeah, not cool. <laughs> it just no. went through your neck. I, 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 yeah, exactly. I just figured you, it was like yeah, you, you you're, went you're tell- material for a second and didn't even know it. You're, you're tell you're telling me to put you on the car. I guess I'll just hang you from the mirror now. That's that would freak me out. And, yeah. Uh, I, and only recently, when I was working on my book, I, I, I realized that a friend of mine, I, I remembered this at some other point, I think when I first went through the books, uh, she asked about it, and I said, oh, that protects the car. And at some point, I decided to take it off, and like the next day, I totaled the car. Oh, well. And I'm like, oops. and I think she was the one that was like, you did say it protected the car, and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm at fault there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you that can't is- tell any of that to the insurance company, though. <laughs> well, I took They're the Baphomet gonna- necklace off, and, and then the car, the deer ran right into the car. Yeah, deer yeah. are harsh. <laughs> they, they, they will mess up a car so badly. Oh, yes. Yes, I've had way too many experiences with that. I do. I, I don't want to laugh, but there's some humor to seeing that dent in the car every time I look out at it. But then I remember the poor little thing just went to the side of the road. Oh, and died. yeah. Yeah. That was... It was like a really young one, too, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It would have done a lot more damage if it was a bigger deer. We're lucky. The ones that live in town here really do wait for cars to go by. They they just wait, and then you go past, and then they jump out. They (laughs) very seldom just dash in front of you like they do everywhere else. Yeah, they they, they wait until you get close enough to not know they're going to jump out. Yeah, Yeah, it's terrible. I had one. Evil deer. Many years ago, driving back, I think from last exit, so like, you know, 6.30 in the morning or whatever, and it must have been bolting across the field, and it just, it must have jumped, because suddenly there was deer head where my windshield was, and then it was gone. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what? That's, oh. Yeah. Well. <laughs> that's that's horrifying. Yeah, that's deer just... are creepy in themselves, never mind paranormal stuff, just seeing them at night is chilling <laughs> when you see them, like, dodge out in the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the the deer that we have here are very large, and uh, my in laws live up in in the in the winter. They live in Miami, but in the summer they live up in New Hampshire, and they live on an island in a lake. And the deer that they have on the island, because it's like there's not a lot of food sources, they're tiny. They all look like to me. They look like little miniature deer. So cute. Oh, it's adorable. So when they see our deer, they're like, oh, my God, it's big. I said, oh, ours aren't deer. They're just Ohio forest cows. That's, that's what they are. They're they're corn fed. They can't help it. They're yeah, compared just to that, they're going to look like elk. <laughs> yeah. It's like they're just gigantic. We, It's just everything else in Ohio is big. So so are they. I mean, the people ones, are big. The, deer are big. The, one, the, mm, whatever. Ones, the ones here get pretty big, too. Pretty solid big. Mm-hmm. So I, I like I said, I've hit, I've hit enough of them and totaled enough cars with them where it's just like oh they'll they'll mess up your car yeah <laughs> they're nasty I don't think I I mean I've hit deer I even tapped one with one of my more recent cars that I don't have anymore um and it completely screwed up the uh, the lights and everything and I didn't know at the time like because it ran out in the road and started running directly in front of me and I'm like hitting the brakes and I just bumped it yeah and i was like okay just a bump but apparently that bump jostled the wire harness that then all the the like the headlights and everything else started going crazy after a few months and i'm like is this me what's going on that sounds like your car situations yeah Uh, yeah we barely bumped a deer on uh on its rear end with one of the front lights and it broke the front light barely did anything to the deer she just kept going yeah you know she was fine, but it it cracked the plastic on the headlight. Now the the white and the that white was sucky the white deer I hit that was a completely different situation because that thing was very very tall and I came around the corner it looked like a, a white statue someone had just installed I was like what is that <laughs> and then as I got closer I was going fairly slow because I was just staring at it 
Uh, and I was with my girlfriend at the time, and she's staring at it. We're like, what? And then it starts to run. It's like, oh, it's a deer. It, it's an actual deer. And it runs right in front of the car. And just as I stop, I tap it, and it falls on the hood. And it just sits there staring at us for a minute. Big horns, pure white, and then just gets up and runs away. And I was like, well, that was a thing. Okay. <laughs> Wow. That would definitely freak me out. Oh, she was she was horribly freaked out. She thought it was like some premonition that I was going to die. I mean, yeah, given the symbolism, especially if I saw something like that, it would be even more terrifying because of the Gwyn thing and the whole white heart yeah, yeah, that's yeah. supposed to symbolize. Yeah. We, we, we were going yeah. to, I think, Rochester the next day for an ECW show, and and she was like, don't go. And I'm like, it's yeah. it's fine. It's not, nothing's good. She's like, no, you should not go. Did you go? Yeah. No, if you okay. killed the deer, I might have been like, no, nah, you should maybe not go. Right. You should probably <laughs> give like offerings to you spared you know, the, deer. the other world. Uh, but yeah, since you didn't kill it, that's well, that's fine. <laughs> it was just, I don't know. It was slumming. I, <laughs> just doing something weird. I mean, we do have white deer around here, but they're not. Oh yeah, they're not yeah, usually they're, out. They 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 were on the army depot for yeah. a long time, but every once in a while, one would escape. They're still there, aren't they? Yes. And that that whole reserve yep. is still there. Yep. Yeah. Now it's not an army depot. Now it's just a bunch of different stuff. Mm, a a prison, a restaurant, and some apartments. A pr- are wow. they all in one building? <laughs> I, I live in the apartments next to the prison. Oh, yeah, that sounds. Is it, great. I hope it's cheap rent. You yeah. know. <laughs> it's pretty affordable. Yeah, see? So, aside from all the, like, the little things that happened, which, who knows, it was just a, a strange sequence of events with the brownie talk and the whatever, and then the, between the owls and the deaths, but there were two days before, and I just want to clarify, I don't have dreams about that Gwyn guy very frequently at all. In fact, it's been probably over a year. So he suddenly just appeared in a dream, and um, I was following him through, and it was extremely clear uh, so as I go through hormonal changes, my dreams are becoming extremely vague, almost non-existent, mm-hmm. just kind of abstract. It's really depressing. <laughs> I really miss the clarity of my dreams and the being being able to have a lucid dream. So the fact that this happened, it was unannounced, it was unprovoked, uh, just suddenly in a dream where I was partially lucid because it was just so clear. And I was following him and I didn't even recognize him consciously, at least as just like, OK, I'm supposed to follow this guy. And, you know, he had the blue plaid shirt on and but his hair was cut shorter and uh, he had cut his facial hair. So he looked even younger. I'm just like, I'm following this kid through this building. I, I don't know what we're doing, but just kind of like this towering, um, very fancy kind of plush look like a like a high rise hotel or something. And uh, he, the first thing he does in, is go to have me meet his dad which was very strange. And then we just kept going and then we went upstairs uh, and there was some point, I don't remember if it was after we got all the way to like the, uh, I don't know, it was very, the very top, almost like this kind of right before you get to like the penthouse suite or something. We're just kind of chilling on a couch, but I don't know if it was after that or before this whole dream where he took me to through a house that looked, um, it was kind of like in this misty place, but it was very realistic. It was, it looked like an abandoned house, like people hadn't lived there in a while. And on a bare wall above a couch, he just sort of opens a portal and still starts telling me about death and the reverse death and whatever that meant, like birth and sort of like reincarnation type of stuff. It was like recycling life and death. I don't know. I would have to look at the notes now, but that's, I don't think it made a lot of sense at the time anyway. So at the end of the dream, I wake up, I'm like, all right, so we've had the owl thing. I just had that. That's not usually a good sign when he shows up, (laughs) at least for stuff like that. But I just kind of brushed it aside as a cool dream. And that was just two days before I got the first uh, announcement that somebody had died. So I don't know if it relates, but it seems to be a pattern. Probably. Yeah, like there's a definite pattern. I don't know if it's just me picking up on something about to happen or, you know, what exactly is happening. But uh, I don't know. I don't, even, I don't know what to do with stuff like that. It feels like it's so potentially important, but it just kind of sits in my documents un, unexamined, unknown <laughs> and untold. So if anybody else has experiences like that, then maybe they can feel validated. Well, you know, you've got a... Uh... A, a deity who's a, a psychopomp and then you've got owls yeah and he show he he took you to his father which i found interesting because of course his father is nude is that's yeah, what like uh, or whatever, he, uh, whatever yeah the, yeah yeah it's it's uh you know he he yeah <sighs> He was he was one who got rid of plagues. So, you know, when did you have this dream? It was on like, December 20th. This year? Yeah. This yeah, past just year? Just very recently. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe our, um, you know, triple threat hideous 
uh, winter of all of the viruses in the in the universe descending on us are not going to be so bad because interestingly, uh, Nud got rid of like three plagues, three illnesses. Maybe that's it. Um, yeah, I yeah that that yeah I like your input because I really don't know what that meant. It really surprised me. And I didn't really talk to him. He just opened the door. He's like, yeah, it's my dad. I'm like, I don't know who you are. And I, okay. Um, and I saw the guy and he was just like this normal guy with kind of silver hair, you know, real trim. Yeah. He looked, he looked very professional and he just kind of smiled at me and said, hi. I'm like, I'm awkward right now. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. And so we just left. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was profound. It was just like, what a gesture, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the. That was the first thing I thought of was the three plagues. I was like, am I remembering this right? So I had to look it up. Yeah, I don't even know about that. Yeah, I haven't really been able to study into it. But yeah, he was he was famous for his uh, his generosity as well. Well, Um, Because I was pretty intimidated by the whole situation. I'm like, I'm. Well, hmm. yeah, when when underworld deities take you to visit their family, that's going to be. It's going to be a little I mean, strange. I felt like such a dork because I, I didn't recognize who I was with. I was just like, I'm with this kid. Uh, I think I'm supposed to be doing something important. This looks like an official place, so I'm probably here on some business. So when he, you know, introduced me casually to his dad, I'm just like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing right now. I just felt like anxious. <laughs> so I was in a whole other mindset if I had known like, yeah. oh, this is Gwen and maybe this is important that then I would have acted differently <laughs> instead of just a dreamy oh, zombie. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, it's eh. such a pleasure to meet you, sir. I hear you do Maybe such great things with plagues. Just, just were kind of like, oh, hey, you know. Yeah. Um, you're less likely to say something goofy if you're just kind of uh, overwhelmed and <laughs> just stunned. Ignorant. Then, <laughs> ignorant then you're not going to stick your foot in your mouth, and that's a good thing. Um, it, yeah, it's 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 difficult when your uh, when your spirits change how they look, but they do it a lot. I mean, it's a thing that they do. They want to keep you on their toe, uh, keep you on your toes. They want you to, to you know, they don't want it to, to be easy. I mean, no kind of initiation is easy and no kind of spirit communication is particularly easy. Um, but, you know, you're dealing with someone that is not only uh, an underworld deity, but someone who is of the, the fairy folk. And they're they just, wow, they just do things however they want to. And uh, apparently, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's just what they do. It's you know, I I have had this familiar spirit with me since I was a kid, and he's changed uh, the way he looks several times. Um, you know, so he never really showed. And and honestly, I don't know what he actually looks like. Yeah, that's that's because the int- right. That's the interesting none of us, part. Yes. None of us know, right? Really, they present themselves as they present themselves. One of the things I I said on Facebook today, which is actually kind of maybe I don't know uh, relevant. Uh, hold on a second. It was in response to Morgan Daimler finding a reference to the fairy folk as being. Um, in the medieval period as not being conflated with the human dead. Um, She said, and today I've learned that the blurring of fairies with the dead is probably an effect of Christian syncretism during the Middle Ages, which is when we see the dead appearing in the world of fairy as opposed to living humans who were stolen away while still living, possibly related to the blending of fairy with purgatory. And she's reading... Ashlyn Burns' book, Other Worlds, Fantasy and History in Medieval Literature. So she she mentions that. And there's there's a whole bunch of people jumping in on the on the conversation. It's a really good conversation. And I said, I always reckoned that that's what happened, that it was a later edition from Christianity, but I never had academic confirmation. It was just in my head canon. I can't help but think that all of these ideas, that they are the blessed dead, they're demoted pagan deities, etc. I think they're just more masks that they wear when interacting with yeah, us. Yeah. That whatever origin we trace down for them, scrolling backwards and, and digging through history and documents and manuscripts, what we will always find is how the others are in relation to ourselves, not who or what they really are, oh. as themselves. Now, yeah. I'm sure everyone here knows this and are going, damn girl, duh. 
But I'm thinking of the folks who are not deeply thoughtful about life forms that live alongside humanity in the same general landscape, but are quite different from humanity in many ways. These folks will latch onto any explanation of them in relation to humans and only understand them in relation to humanity. I wonder what they are and who they are and what they're like amongst themselves. That's excellent. That actually yeah. unlocks some memories for me. So thank you. Uh, early oh. on, because, you know, I was coming at this when I first started really getting into these experiences in uh, 2004 with the first dream that was essentially Gwyn. Um, you know, when I had that dream, I'm like, is this just some sort of Jungian awakening? Is it? Some, yeah, I knew vaguely that stuff and I was kind of trying to apply it, but it just felt way beyond that. And the first thing I said to him when I met him in the dream was, what do you really look like? Because yeah. I could feel whatever he was presenting to me was not definitely not what he actually was. And so the whole thing after that, I was what I was chasing was kind of like, you know, my whole thing with uh, paleontology was sort of the same thing. Like, what did it really look like when it was alive? I wasn't mm -hmm. applying that directly, but that was my, my fascination was like, what, what actually is this? What is the reality behind this? Is it just me? Is it my neurons? What actually does it look like? Does it actually look like something? And so, right. yeah, it just kind of kept going like that. And then so I would, my friend and I would do the Ouija sessions or I would get in dreams of, and get certain answers like the first thing I got was, no, no, we use faces usually of people that were once alive to you in your timeline or, or something like that. Or like we blend the, the features so you won't even recognize the person unless you happen to see a photo or something in, in real life, which I generally don't. I'm like, so are these dead people that I'm seeing? And I just don't know it. It was just an interesting concept that came up early on. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of brushed it aside as, you know, I have no evidence for this. It's just interesting information. Could just be an act of imagination. But it was stuff I hadn't thought about, never considered, because my, my focus was the sciences. So it was flights of fancy for me. But it, it seems to keep coming up again and again and again, like you just said. So I find that really interesting. Yeah. And with that, we are out of time. So Barbara... Yes. Where can people find uh, your podcast? Anything else you do? Um, well, they can find my podcast anywhere where podcasts are aggregated and all that. And, you know, podcast servers. But I also am available on www.sixdegreesofjohnkeel.com. It's six as a digit and the rest of it's spelled out. Um, I'm also on Instagram as... 60JK67, I think, and or maybe it's 60JK1967. Um, but you can find it if you look up Six Degrees of John Keel on Instagram. And um, I'm also on Facebook as Barbara Fisher. Um, you, you can recognize me by the fact that I talk a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can find me that way. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. If you ever, if, if any of your listeners ever want to talk to somebody, if they see anomalous lights, um, you know, send them my way. Um, send me an email, y'all, or you can just find me on Facebook or whatever. My email is 6djk67 at gmail.com um, because I'm doing a lot of research about, um, you know, little treetop level and below lights or, you know, lights in the sky or strange beams of light moving through forests and stuff like that right. or lights appearing in your room, you know, glowing humanoid figures, all of that. All right. If people want to contact you, Natalie, um, that's a little harder just cause I have to spell it out. But if you want to go look for me, it's E O R H Y T H M your rhythm. You can just probably Google it and find it or just type that into any of the Instagram or Facebook or whatever. All right. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to give a shout out here to all of my Patreons and a special shout out to those of you pledging $10 or more. Billuminati, Chuck Shutters, Leanne Cherry, Allison Cook, Super Inframan, 36 Dingo, CJ, Tim, Andrew Nichols, Matthew Sproul, Christine, a blue second gen MR2 drifting around a Japanese mountain, Patricia Gaiaquinta, Alex Whitcomb, American Rambler, Andrew Maines, Ann Witowski, Barbara Fisher, Beverly Williamson, Big Boy Limina, Charles Davis, Charles in Florida, Land of the Crazy Incommunicable, Chris, Chris Cisternos, Craig Parmenter, Diane B, MTK, Eric Todd, Jay, James Lattimore, James Lindsay, John Bracken, Carla Mahoney, Kevin, Kevin Shrek, Cool Kitty, Kristen L., Laser Printer Jam, Lauren McLean, Lynn's Jackson K., 
Luke Osborne, MJ Armstrong, Jim and Sophie, Mark Brady, Matt in Delaware, Mr. Weird, Ole Andre Olar, Patricia W., Paul Jeffries, Philosopher of Mirrors, Ray Benedetto, Riker and Stark, Ron Dupre, Sam Sharon, Seed Person One, Stacy Sherwood, Tactical Therapist, Taylor Bell, Thunderboy, Tyler Glimstead, Varoche K., Vincent Trewell, Walker, Will Gebhard, Will Powell, and Ren Collier. Thank you all so very much. You help make this show possible. There is a lengthy Patreon segment to follow this show, so if you enjoyed that conversation, it will continue for Patreons. And if you want to become a patron, it's only $3 a month, and it helps us out greatly. And I'd like to take a moment to just thank some new patrons over the last couple of weeks. Seed Person 1, Mr. Weird, Jamie Tennant, Casey Reagan, Elizabeth W. Anson, and Polly Road. So next week, as I said, 10th anniversary show, and then UFO history for 2022 to start the 11th year off right. Thank you for everyone who has supported us over the last 10 years, whether it just be from listening, talking to people about it, spreading the word, being a patron, buying merch, whatever, leaving reviews, ratings. Thank you all, and I'll see you next time. You have been listening to Where Did the Road Go? This show is made possible in part from our Patreons, and we thank you and everyone listening for helping us continue this exploration of the strange. You can always find everything Where Did the Road Go related at www.wheredidtheroadgo.com. And thank you so much for your support.